and welcome to the Property Unleashed podcast. I'm your host, Mark Fitzgerald, and it's great to have you joining me here today. And today I have a special treat for you. I have a good friend of mine, Mr. Andy Gwynn, joining me all the way from sunny Spain. Great to have you on, Andy. How are you today? Uh, I'm good, Mark. It's great to be here. It's been a long time coming because I know we met in the UK only a week, couple of weeks ago. So I'm uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to this and uh, and it's great catching up and hooking up with you as always. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, Andy, so for people that maybe don't know who you are and stuff, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please, mate? Oh, wow. Um, where do I start? OK, you and I know each other through um, Simon Zucci's Mastermind and the PIN Property Investors Network environment. So I met I met Simon 20 years ago when I met Mary, my partner. They were working together. I've coached Simon. I was a business coach. Um, you can't take the coach out of the guy. But over the last 15 years, I've morphed into niching people, uh, niching to help people, especially with LinkedIn. But I'm also investing in property, investing in other areas and getting well, we are living the dream. I sort of I sort of always wonder about that phrase. But we're, we're now living in southern Spain uh, and we're having a great time. So I work a lot with people on helping them with their business growth, certainly as part of our business, but also helping them get more business out of LinkedIn and also helping them with their investments, I think, generally. Good stuff. And of course, you now live in Spain. So that was one of your sort of goals was to go out there. You like your bikes uh, and you basically, as you say, living the dream. But it takes time to get there, doesn't it? So, I mean, I always like to dig a little bit deeper. You know, where, where, where did Andy start when, when Andy sort of left school? What, 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 was, what was your sort of journey like? Oh, man, I'm 56. How long have we got? Do you know what? Um, <laughs> I think I, I was a rebel at school. I got thrown out of comprehensive. I got sent to boarding school for the last couple of years. I did one term at college and then left because I wanted to, I wanted to make money. I didn't know about making money. I wanted money. I wanted to earn money. I didn't, I didn't want to be reliant on pocket money. And I guess that's the key thing. I didn't want to be reliant. I didn't realize that at the time, be reliant on others. So I got, I got a job. I was packing gloves in a warehouse um, for cash in hand. Um, bought my first car at 17, realized I was never going to be practical, um, never going to be a mechanic. So I needed I, I needed um, I needed to make enough money that I could pay people to do that stuff. But I actually sold my car to force me to go and get a sales reps job that gave me a company car. Um, and, and so I have sat down and thought about this over the last couple of years. Never really thought about it. I've just cracked on doing what I'm doing, thinking anybody can do it. But actually, it, it, there is some poignant lessons in there for me and for other people. Um, 20 years ago, I, I quit work. I bought. I, I worked in sales. I worked, became, got into management, uh, helped run a um, national company, was passionate about sales, passionate about sales management, working closely with my MD, um, studied management at the OU, which sort of came across, studied coaching to understand how to coach my sales teams to better performance. Then came across the most awesome franchise in the world called Action Coach, global organization of business coaches founded by a phenomenal multimillionaire, Brad Sugars, who's an Aussie in, in now in Vegas. I learned so much from him. I thought I knew how to sell. I thought I knew about business, thought I knew about coaching, thought I knew about investing, and it just blew my mind. So 20 years ago, I, I was coaching business owners how to grow businesses. And that's where I met Simon Zucci, and that's where you and I met. I've always been passionate about connecting people. I've always been passionate that I just want to share my – can I say shit? I used to say share my shit, and then I went, no, 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 I want to share my good shit. I don't want to share my <laughs> bad stuff with anybody. Um, but then realized that, you know, I thought if I can do it, anyone can do it. And I realized it's not true. Um, not everyone is in the right place. Uh, to be able to achieve sort of everything that they want to or, or are capable of doing something, I, I, I guess. And, and what I've learned is, yes, anything is possible, but it's us that gets in our own way. And that's where we, you and I have met, because, you know, I've talked extensively over years, and especially in the property investor environment, but other environments on how to, how to achieve the mindset, how to get out of your own way, how to understand your own challenges, what's in here, what holds you back, and what to do about it to get success. Um, and so that's where I came from. Um, where else do you want to know? So I, I, I then started niching into, I'd, I'd coach business owners to build and sell businesses. I coached Simon Zucci in his business way back. And then I studied with him and worked with him 
Um, it was beautiful. My, my life's been beautiful because I'm, I'm work with people, but I get to learn from him at the same time. You know, he was paying me to coach him, but I helped him develop his mastermind program. So I learned more about property investing. That's how we got the house here in Spain. Um, and now I sort of work a few hours a day and invest my money elsewhere. I can keep going on and on. Does that sort of tell you where I came from? I was just passionate about coaching people. I'm now passionate about making money in a time leverage way. My mother the other day said, it's not all about the money. It's not the main thing. I said, it is the main thing because it's the means to an end. So the yes. more money I make, the more time I can spend with people I want to spend time with and the more people I can help. So for me, it is it is the focus, um, if that makes sense. No, that makes perfect sense. I think it's that, um, it's like you say, it's that limiting belief that holds us back. We can pretty much go out there and achieve anything we want. We've only got to really find somebody who's already done it that's willing to show us and tell us how to do it. And then it's just following the steps. Uh, I know you you have the, um, you know, you, you have a little creation methodology, don't you, that basically says if you do these in this order, you will get the results that you want. Uh, and I love I love all that that sort of thing. It's like your, my mother would say the same or, or same thing as your mum says. You know, it's not all about the money. You've got to enjoy life and things. But I actually find that by enjoying life, but by doing things and investing in things, like you say, it gives me time freedom to enjoy life even better. And a life without worrying about resources and money is a life that we all want to seriously be living, isn't it? I think so. Yes, definitely. And the phrase I got taught and I use is the difference between earning and making money. Most people we know are, are a slave to the job that they have to. We have a job. I had a job, had to go to work. Now, I enjoyed it at times. I enjoyed a lot of it, learned a lot, but you still got to do that. And I remember sitting, my mom would come in to my bedroom on a Saturday morning with a cup of tea or whatever. And we would talk and I would say, I don't want to do this forever. I was packing gloves in a warehouse. And I could not imagine myself doing that forever. Mm. And then when I became a salesman, I couldn't imagine doing it forever. I said, I, I don't want to work, but I didn't realize then what I meant was I don't want to have to work. You know, I'm, I'm 56 now. I'm pretty much retired. We could retire if we want to, but I just enjoy making money because I'm sharing it with other people. I enjoy Monopoly as a kid. I realized that I learned, I love sales. When I, when I got into it, I was pushy getting into, I don't mean pushy salesman. I mean, I was pushing in the job I was in poking my nose into the sort of sales function and, and finally the boss gave me a job. Um, so I've always enjoyed making money, making sales um, because I've re realized it's, so it's, I don't want to have to work. I don't want to have to get up and make the money. I don't want to have to get up and pick up the emails and do the do. So it's the difference between making money and earning money. And you know, you can do that in property and Brad sugars. I mentioned who mentored me said, the, the area of success is, is to grow a business so you make money as a business and rob kiyosaki talks about the same then your next step is to invest and the easiest first step of investing is property now yeah. you can stop at business and be hugely financially successful and leveraged and financially free you can stop at property he then said then learn to invest in the markets well i, I understand the principles but i'm never going to do the investing my view now is to make the money, to give the money to other people, to make the money for me. And, and that's where I'm at. And, and I remember thinking it's beyond, not belief, but it's beyond reach for me. Because how do you make, you know, we know money makes money, but I've got to make money in the first instance. And yeah, I do believe you've got to keep, keep on keeping on with what you believe. And sure enough. Um, but also, if you keep on keeping on with what you believe, magic happens you know mm -hmm. tell me when you want to talk about this house where we're sat right now and i can show you the view down the valley to the sea um because it, it's it, it it was just a, a magical example of what's possible yeah yeah i mean i we will talk about your property and obviously how you've got that because it's a fantastic story but also it's it's what does retirement mean to you because people say to me well mark what, what, when you retire when you when you stop doing this when you stop and it's, it's like, well, I probably won't stop. I'll just do more of the things that I enjoy I, in the business. And then I want to be able to sort of outsource the rest or wind it back a bit. But I don't think that, well, I certainly used to. My old way of thinking in the corporate world was, you know, I, I'd love to retire at 55. Do you know what? I drive everybody mad. I had two weeks off recently because I got my hair done. 
Uh, and I, I was driving everybody mad. Why? Because I had time on my hands. We, we plotted that time in to have two weeks off to just chill out and relax. And I was meddling in things. I was, I was doing all, I was absolutely the spanner in the work. So I know for me, I need to keep a little bit of something busy going. Um, but like you say, it's making that money and then investing it so that you've then got the options and the time freedom to do what you want. So, yeah, uh, obviously, you, you, uh, you and your partner, Mary, wanted to live abroad. You had a, a sort of a vision and a plan. I'll let you explain it to us. And, of course, how, you, how you've ended up where you are. Cool. And, and you're right. My mom's sort of asked me um, over the last few years, well, what, what do you mean retire? What would you do? And I said, look, I don't mean stop working. My father was a doctor, eminent doctor. He was a colonel in the army. He worked till retirement. He got a bunch of pensions. He was he was wealthy when he retired. But the whole the whole paradigm was you work till retirement age, and then pension kicks in. I've had to try explain to them that my pro the money coming from my property investing, the money coming from my business, the money coming from my other investments are my pensions. Mm -hmm. It's the same. It's just that I haven't put money into what you well I have. I've just transferred some over into Spain, but it's not going to give me a lot. Because I can make more money elsewhere now than than in pensions. What what I've been privy and privileged to experience in the last probably five years plus is where and more where you can make more money than mainstream, than ISAs, than pensions, than banks. Um, and I'm saying to my mum, these are my pensions. It's just not going into a pension company. And what's a pension company doing? Managing your money in the same way I'm doing it myself. Yeah. Um, in in an essence. So I said I will never stop working. If Mark Fitzgerald says, will you do a podcast one morning while you're sat looking at the flat, calm sea in the sunshine? I'll go, yeah, cool. That's not work. And if I can share stuff and I get people message me saying, I just had one. Saw you speak at someone's podcast uh, recording. I did that recording about 10 years ago and the guy is still giving it to his students. And I'm going, yeah, things have changed, but awesome. If it's given you some value and helped you in some way, that's not work. I've just had a call with one of my business partners. We, we just got some, put some money in somewhere and got even more money. And, and it's like, we're sat in Spain. We went and had lunch Sunday. He's from Wales. He lives in Wales, but he travels every month. And he's got a month in Spain with his wife. We've been down there and had lunch on Sunday and we're talking business. That's not work, you know, but so, I, so it won't be retirement, but I can choose. Yes. And that's the thing. And I love the word leverage, achieving more with less. I've learned that, I can't do it all myself. If I really want to make money in business, then I've got to have people around me that can do the stuff I can't do, I'm not capable of, and I don't want to do. I've got money in um, a great vehicle in foreign exchange trading. There's no way on earth I've studied trading. Am I going to sit down and trade? I, I could do it. I'm detailed if I want to be, but, ugh, but I don't want to be. It's not. I don't enjoy it. So I've got to have other people to do it. That's leverage. Um, then I can choose the work, what I want to do, as you've said. Then I, I'm free to go, do you know what? We'll go to the US for a month and travel around. Um, right now, I've still got to do some stuff, um, but it's less and less, more and more leveraged um, every month. And so part of, I've been big into, you get what you focus on. I'm big into setting goals uh, and deciding what you want to do because so many people don't have goals um and just just keep doing the do um brad sugars again said most people don't live 20 years they live one day and repeat it for 20 every day for 20 years or live one year anyway i've always wanted to live in the sun at the age of 23 i, I tried to buy uh, a scuba diving charter boat in florida with a mate of mine we went out there it got complex it, it me, long story short it didn't work for me so i decided to leave and leave him there came back to the uk but i knew i always wanted to be in the sun i'd, I'd been on expedition to central america in my 20s with a charity as a scuba diving instructor uh i set up a scuba diving school i wanted to take people abroad i wanted to live abroad but but i didn't want to just swap a job for one in the sun i i, I needed i knew i needed financial freedom i knew i needed pensionable system somehow um so we'd always wanted it. Mary was the same. She'd lived in Cyprus for a few years. She wanted the sun. So we went on holiday all around the world for, for years. And we were looking at, could we live here? How would it work? And then we decided Spain. Mary spoke Spanish, loved Spain. I didn't care as long as I was near the sea and in the sun. 
Um, and then we realized it's actually close to the UK if we need to get back quick. And we did two years ago. My father got ill very quickly and passed away last year. So we could fly in and out at a moment's notice. So it ticked that box. And then someone offered us this house. And I think um, I said, they said, you can have it half price. If you go and clear it, if we don't want it. Um, and sadly, the woman, we did it on a handshake. She said, you can have it half price. And I mentioned at the beginning of this call, didn't I, that um, it was a referral. Uh, she was inheriting it off a stead stepmother. She didn't want it. She was suffering from cancer. They got a holiday home in Italy. She said, if you can clear the house of old maid's clothes, deal with the lawyers down there, you can have it half price. And so we got on a plane as quick as we could and flew down here. Mary said, what if I don't like it? I said, I'll buy it anyway, because <laughs> you'd understand well, yeah. buying low market value properties. I'm sure I can do something with it. She loved it and very quickly. I loved it. Um, and so we then we bought it half price on a handshake. And sadly, a few six months after we got it, she passed the woman passed away. Mary had been dealing with her. Uh, and it just goes to show human beings, because I said to Mary, I need a legal document. We need an agreement. Mary said, back mm -hmm. off. I'm dealing with this. I'm working with this lady. She'd been offered 20 grand more by two people and said, no, I've, I've done a deal with Andy and Mary. It was just beautiful uh, and poignant. And I go a bit goosey, but also profitable. And we were then flying backwards and forwards every month into the UK before Brexit. Um, and it was interesting, although I set goals and we wanted it, and it actually exceeded the detail of what was on our checklist. We, we couldn't, there's some things in this village we just couldn't have, we, we just didn't think of to put in our, on our goal list. Um, and the interesting thing for all the for all the achievement and all the setting goals and working with people to think bigger and faster and, and, and I can, it, it's, <laughs> you, still, you still get hit with things um, because we've got a house in the UK that before we found this one, we sold. And you understand lease options. I sold it on a lease option. Therefore, the person, the couple were buying it off me over a period of years. So they were paying me extra rent, yada, yada, yada. And we moved into rental accommodation thinking, if I find somewhere in Spain, we can move fast. Three years later, this couple said, we don't want the house. I sat down with them all sorts and made sure they were clear. You could sell it. You know, you're going to lose all the extra money you've given me. We know all that. We're stressed. Our kids want to go back to the town they were in. This had been their dream home in the countryside. We, we, we know. We know it comes back to you. By which time, three that three years down the road, I put it back on the market and it sold. So I sold the same house twice for 70 grand more than it was worth. Um, and, and I remember telling my father. So I, I say this to your audience because I know it's all about property. Is I don't say it to impress you. I say it to impress upon you what is possible. And so much is possible. And there'll be people out there who are naysayers. Ignore them. My father was very, very narrow-minded, incredible doctor, um, very skilled in many ways, but not entrepreneurial. And I remember at a friend of his funeral saying, oh, I've sold the stables. And he, he sort of sort of looked at me, did you get what you wanted for it? In a Welsh accent. I said, no. He said, oh, I didn't think you would. Blah. I went, I got 70 grand more than it was worth. He said, have you done that? I said, um, oh, phew. your younger son, my younger brother, who's a commercial property lawyer, has looked at it and said, it's okay. And my father went, oh, that's all right then. I thought, what? I've done the deal. <laughs> but because my younger lawyer brother says it's all right, must be all right. No, no, no. Anyway, um, so it's just been magic. But I, I say that because it's believing what you want to do. Set, yes, set the goals, learn what you need to do, but keep putting it out there and keep doing it. Um, mm. Because, yes, we've had some real hard times. Um, and you see this in, in Facebook ads and stuff. I had a, a marketing consultant make me sit down and go, write your backstory. You don't need to say you're a multimillionaire because I'm not. You don't need to say you got the Ferrari. I haven't. Yeah. But we were close to bankruptcy a couple of times. We did We did have some hard times. Um, yes, I made lots of mistakes. Could have managed it differently. Um, yes, where we've come through in the last certainly six or seven years, we're in the best place we've ever been. Two things. I lowered my overheads. But I did it cleverly. You know, um, I remember talking to a great friend. I remember being on the doorstep and he's an awesome guy we hook up every two weeks just brainstorm stuff like you and i might be now and um he said well why why have you got the jag i had an xk8 jag i loved it and i put the phone down i went yeah it's costing me 600 quid a month so i sold it and i bought a t5 transporter black van with 20 inch wheels but it's a commercial vehicle i could put it through the business so i was saving tax and money on it so it's costing me less and and it was like i can re reduce overheads and I can do it cleverly. I got rid of some other stuff as well. And also we eventually started making more money because if you keep on keeping on, you will. Um, 
so that that's the sort of backstory just always wanted to be in the sun i've only put this t-shirt on for you um normally wear a black one left my baseball cap downstairs but we're different anyway um and i'm sat on the roof terrace and it's not just my roof terrace that's my dartboard but that's mary's uh tree of life so it's our, it's our joint terrace and, and the seas down there and, that, and that's how it's come about and i have to do gratitude every day because it would be easy for me to take it for granted and I, and I always said i can't just swap one job in the uk for a job in this weather um i've got to be more i've got to create that financial freedom that was important to me and we've done it um but i have to keep doing gratitude so when i get up here this is one of my offices um i will sit and look at that sea with a cup of coffee before i pick up any emails and just do gratitude for where we're at um not just for the weather and the sea but cost of living i mean i'm living cheap i'm making pounds sterling i'm spending euros and it's cheap and we're in a lovely and health and wealth and everything so damn that was a long answer wasn't it <laughs> brilliant i love it i love the detail and everything on it but the thing is it's also it's it's not you know, you're not over, overnight success. You've taken years. You've worked your ass off. You've got yourself. You've known what you wanted. You and Mary are a team, uh, and and you both had that vision and those goals. But you have. I thought you were going to say Sam. Cool. You're back, and you're right. There's two things I'm, you're prompting me to remember. Um, one is Brad Sugars, who, who was my mentor and train with him i've mentioned him when i first bought into action coach in 2003 i remember him saying it will take you 10 years to build a business and become financially free and i think after 15 years we i came out of his franchise but we are still in contact i've sold to him and sold to him recently and, and i'm privileged with that but it, it tells me that we i know we have something special and i went to him i said you said 10 years it's taken me nearly 15 he just looked at me and went you didn't learn quick enough and i, I can't <laughs> argue with that i can't argue with that so there is yes there is no overnight success. Um, you're right. We hear that statement and it's, it's true. Like all successful people, you know, the comedians that have been on the circuit for decades. Um, but yes, I believe you can do it quickly and you can do it more quickly than I did. And we are in such an incredible time to do that through, mm -hmm. through technology and through the way the world is. Um, I've just started studying and, I, and I've been working with, as well as studying with an awesome guy called uh, Kane, K-A-N-E, Minkus who is just at the cutting edge of AI, teaching people how to use AI, anybody, one-man business, how to use AI in their business. He speaks with Tony Robbins, delivers for him. He's global, but he's mm. awesome. It's like, wow, I am all about how can I do less, do more with less leverage? How can I achieve more with less? And boy, are where we're at with AI right now for anybody in business, property, life. Um, so, yeah, it's, we have worked on the other thing that stuck in my mind a few years ago. I had a guy said, um, what I like about you is you're still here. I went, wow, man, I'm only 50. He went, no, 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 no. You've been on the circuit. You've been networking. We met 15, 20 years ago when I was at BNI, or little networking groups in, in my local area in, in the UK, in, in the Midlands. He said, but you're still here. Yes, you've changed how, what you're doing, who you're working with, how you're working. But you and I are in contact. And... You know, we met the other day, we were at the big mastermind dinner and I've, I met people that I knew 20 years ago. And I'll tell you about the best investment I've seen for a long time right now. And it's a guy I met through Simon Zucci, close friends with Simon. I met him 15 years ago. And, and so that for me is awesome. But this guy said, you're still here. I've seen so many people come. They've been in my network, whatever network that is. And then they've just disappeared or crashed and burned or not failed, but faded. And I went, yeah, thanks. That's important to me. It's, you know, the back to I can't see me stopping working. I will still hook up with you guys because property investors are, are, and the network you have, we have is important to me. The Action Coach globally. A lot of my other client contacts, friends are coaches, trainers, consultants, property investors that I know, that I've known for years. I've always been touching them. Yeah, no, it's great. And, and, and that's what it's all about. But you enjoy it. And that's the thing that we're trying to say to it. I always say to people when they're getting involved in property and a lot of people are getting started up or, or it's it's going to be a hard slog. There's going to be ups and downs. There's probably going to be more downs in the beginning. So it's about making sure that you put yourself in the right place. You put yourself in the right community. You have that support so that when you have the downs, you don't quit because you only fail if you quit. And I also believe massively that when you start anything, you haven't yet found 
what is actually your purpose, what is actually your thing. You're just finding different ways to see what that is. And I think that evolves over time. See myself going through the corporate world, becoming senior managers and everything, then starting my own business. Property is great and it's a fantastic vehicle and I use it very well, systemized the business, got it cash flowing very, very well. Is that my love? Is that my true passion? Building businesses actually is something I enjoy. Property, not so much. I love walking around property and I love negotiating deals and things, but I could do that pretty much in any industry. Um, but I do enjoy building businesses. So, I, I mean, you know, I'm pushing myself now and building a, a, a business now next year that isn't actually anything to do with property. Why? Because I think what I've done here in property, I can put anywhere else. Um, but I, I feel that there's more of a passion for me in, in that as well. So I'm not moving away from property at all, but I just want to try something else as well. Why? Because I've got a passion for it. And why not? We've got to be doing something and I want to build more wealth. I, I think I'm the same. I think I said to you, I've always been fascinated by making money. I love Monopoly as a kid. I love, it's not the, is it the winning? It's the accumulating. It was the money. I love counting money. I saved money as a kid. Um, and it took me a long time to realize what's my passion. You know, was it, mm. why did I want to coach? I wanted to help people, but I didn't realize that. I left the corporate world to set up my business as a business coach because I'd been told I could make three times what I was earning in the job within the first six, 12, 18 months. And I did. And that's why, but I think, well, I left, I did that. I set up my own business for the money. I mean, property for the money, but of course there's more to it than that. I've said earlier, I like sharing my stuff. I get passionate. Why? Because if I can do it, or if I've got this investment here, that's giving me 5% a month, I can share it with other people. If I've got an example of how you can buy a house, I want to share it with other people, but that's not the, that wasn't the driver. And I've realized that the driver is to create, financial freedom that gives me then gives me time yeah now i would have a if i was coaching you and you said that to me i go but you can create time right now yes i can and i can help more people and create more time and give more to more people with more money that when i've got more money so so it's i think it's an and it's right i am create freeing up more time but it's this it was this driver what do i enjoy and i think for people i would urge them to yes you are absolutely right um with property there's some tough times i've got some properties around me now that are not making money now i've made money from in the past so i'm okay with that but also did i knock a lot of doors did i have deals fall through did i have scary times yes and if you believe it's the right thing for you i knew property could work um then you keep on keeping on but that doesn't mean you can't change your strategy and your angle and i think it's a balance because I've said to, we, we had a, a different franchise, a marketing franchise that was failing. The, the marketplace had changed and I gave it, left it to Mary. I was focusing on my other stuff and, and, and I was frustrated with a lack of business in that area. And she said, but I've stopped flogging a dead horse. I said, yeah, but you still sat on the dead horse. Get rid of the, get rid of the franchise. And, and we did. So yes, by all means, change direction. I still got the same end game-ish, but I'm just taking a different road to get there. Because I've heard, I've heard successful people say, if they had their time again, there was a famous quote that said, I would learn to fail faster. In other words, yeah. make a faster decision. But you've got to balance that. We know people around us that make fast decisions and don't look before they leap and get burned, pick up the wrong shiny pennies that are not shiny. Yeah. Uh, so it is a balance. It's about learning correctly yourself. So yes, property is there. If you believe it, keep on keeping on, but you've got to learn more and adjust more. Um, so that was, I think that was important. You are absolutely right. But what I've learned is I love doing the deal and then making the money. So I deliver some, I'm going to weave this in because you've said you'd ask me about how people can contact me and stuff. They've got my name here. They can find me on LinkedIn. There is only one Andy Gwynn looks like this. I've got high ticket consultancy where people pay me to deliver on their LinkedIn activity. I have some unique automation, phenomenal business part of mine. It is unique in the world. And we can go and make connections, go message people. I do a lot with investors and property investors who are looking for people who want cash. So we can go to business owners. We can engage with them on LinkedIn. And that pays me one, two, three, four grand a month per business, per client. Depends how it works. And I help people drive attendees to their webinars in a unique way within that as well. Now, I have some time to deliver on that. It's highly leveraged for me but it's still some time. And I've realized sometimes I go, I have to sit down and deliver because I've got to get this right for this client and check in on this. It's, it's not mega hours for me, but it's still some work to do, doing the do. 
But when I sign up a new client at that moment, a client says yes. And then I see the money drop in the bank. I get excited. I've realized I like the deal and I like seeing mm -hmm. the money up. So I'm investing in this um, foreign exchange trading business that my client friend has. And I'm seeing the results every day. And I love that. So I've realized I like either doing the deal, love shaking the hands on this house and or seeing the money grow. So I can see the money grow without doing the deal, but I made the decision. So what I've realized is I want less and less delivery. Still working with some great people on LinkedIn, always will because it's still highly leveraged. So yeah, I've read, I think what I would say to people is, yeah, you can get clear on your goal, but it took me a long time to keep asking myself, what is it that really juices me? What is, we hear, what's your purpose? I, go, oh, I just want to make money and not work. No, 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 that's not a purpose, is it? I don't know whether it's the word purpose or what is it that juices you? What is it really? And I've realized for me, I enjoy, but what would I, what would I do this week if I didn't have to get up and work? And it was like, damn, well, it'd be like a weekend. Yeah, but sort of weekends, you don't really go away for a month and you don't do sort of lots because you're chilling. And, and it just, I thought I've got to sit and make some time to be honest with myself and ask me, ask myself, what is it that I really enjoy doing? I think that's the ultimate. Mm -hmm. If someone genuinely says to me they love growing a business, I've got a, I've got a business partner and he works stupid hours. I, is he a workaholic? No, I've seen workaholics. I actually believe he loves what he does. But I think that's rare. I think the thing to yeah. do is go what, honest. Be honest with yourself. What do you really enjoy and love doing? And then how can I do more of that in my work and less of the stuff I don't want to do? Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. And I love it. I love it. So uh, about this time, I like to have a quick fire round and ask you a few questions more because I'm fascinated with the answers. Is that all right with you? Yes. I'm looking down here because if I if we overrun, I want to, if this is value. Um, I have another call, but it's a business partner of mine. Um, so if I just send him a message, he'll be fine. Shoot. Absolutely. Right. No problem. Well, we, it is quite quick anyway. Um, so uh, what's the best advice you've been given? What? In life? Right. Well, or, something that sticks. I mean, I uh, know loads stick in your mind, but maybe, <laughs> you know, best advice you've been given recently or the best advice uh, you've given out to, to help the audience. The first thing that came into my mind was my father. I told you he's quite, he was quite a character. It was the worst advice I've been given, but I didn't take it. Because I remember once asking him, um, my old man was very dominant. And I remember saying, what's involved in a vasectomy? He said, you don't want a vasectomy. I said, I never said I was going to have one. I just wondered what's involved. You don't want one. I've got loads of my mates come back to me going, Doc, how do I reverse this? I said, I didn't say I wanted one. I just wanted to know what was involved. Anyway, I had one. And it's been, it was one of the best decisions we made because Mary and I, we didn't want kids. We got great nephews, nieces and whatever. What's the best advice? I think we've touched on some of it. I think work, Jim Rohn, the late, great Jim Rohn, one of his quotes was, you should work harder on yourself than you do on your job. You know, my, my, I, I started my career in my own business as a business coach. And this is why Simon puts me on stage with every one of his mastermind programs, because he said, I can teach people everything they want to know about property investing. But the difference is some will, some will do it, some won't. What is it that stops those that won't? It's what's in here. It's not that you haven't got the facts or the or the, 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 the knowledge, but it's all about what goes on in here. And I used to say the same. I can teach you how to put a phone script in place in your business. But if you have a fear of rejection, you'll never pick up the phone anyway. And that's, so we've got to work on you and you're, you're yeah. in a, you know that. So I think we should always be working harder on ourselves. And I think one of the best things, and I don't know whether I coined this or got it from somewhere, I'd just say, ultimately, just be ultimately brutally honest with yourself. If you're totally honest, we lie to ourselves. We kid ourselves. We delude ourselves. We collude with ourselves. If you're honest with yourself, you, you, you'll move forward. And I think we talked about keep on keeping on. Um, and and one, of the, one of the affirmations I teach, which you know, and, and it's, I think it's a great piece of advice, is um, what other think, people think of me is none of my business. Stop worrying what people think. Yeah, I'm looking at myself now going, could I have done something different? I, I never sit in a yellow T-shirt, but I was on a call before. What's Mark's audience going to think? When I say I don't care, it's because I, I sort of don't. I, I used to give out audio CDs of Brad Sugars before I met business owners to go bring them on as coaching clients of mine. And I'd have people go, 
I'd say, what did you think of the audio CD? They go, well, it was all right, but he was a bit American. I go, well, actually, he's Australian. But really, I don't care. What did you think of the content? Why is it people are criticizing? So what do people think of me? I sort of don't care. I hope that you're listening to the content. Secondly, more importantly, I hope you go away and do something with it. Mm. I always say to people, I don't care what you think. I care about what you go away and do. And so best bit of advice, I learn a lot and still do from Tony Robbins, who's the best in the world. And it's, it is about, he has a great phrase, great statement that says something like, it's at the point that we make a congruent, committed decision that we shape our destiny. Sounds a bit grand, but in other words, when you take some action, something happens. How easy would it have been for me not to have rung the woman that I was referred to with this house? So it's about do something um, and keep learning. And, and, and I know learning, it sounds, when, when I first got into business, I was very full of I know. Oh, I don't need to learn. I'm good at sales. I'll just crack on and make the money. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, there you go. I like that. that no, it? that's good. That's good. Thank you. And it is. Uh, I, I love the one, you know, you, you shouldn't worry about what other people are thinking about. You just, as long as you're doing the right things in the right manner, you're being the best version of you that you want to be. Everybody else can have their opinions and do what they like. And I, I, that was one of the things that I've always taken away. As soon as I got that, I'm a lot happier. You know, I go out there, I do a lot of talks as well, I like your good self. Uh, and I can't, you know, I can't tell what the audience is thinking. And I, I'm not bothered. I'm just doing what I do as best of my ability. And some people will like it and some people won't like it. And you know what? I'm fine with that. And and I think you're so right, Mark, because um, what was I, was I going to say? I think that the, I think the clincher with that that you've said is if you're honest with yourself, you said, if I'm comfortable with, with that, I'm doing the right thing. And I go back to. At some point, I think all of us, uh, we're not totally honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I might do something and go, yeah, Gwyn, you have sworn on stage. You have done something that might offend some people. You know you could have done it differently. But a lot of people won't acknowledge that with themselves. I, I, I see people every day where I go, I know you're ignoring that. You're deluding yourself, colluding yourself. And, and then if you're going out, going, I don't care what people think, but you're not doing it with good intent. So I think it's this back to be totally honest with yourself. I I am long enough now, I've learned that I'm not chasing business in the sale. 20 years ago, I might have gone, oh, what will other people think? Put the suit on, the white shirt, and the red tie, and I'd never have a beard like this, never had hair like this. And I'm going, this is me. I enjoy this. So therefore, I'm turning up to Mark's podcast, and I've got it's a British Legion T-shirt. I'm also passionate about the British Legion. and. Nice. whatever but it's but i'm thinking I, I could have done better and i'm just going do you know what he's doing great stuff pushing a great podcast out there people are volunteering to listen to a podcast they're going to be more open-minded aren't they we'll see so i think yeah you're right be honest with yourself if if you're doing it with good intent and with values it doesn't matter what you, you'll never please all the people all the time you can't because people are mad <laughs> well they are they are and I, I, just on the t-shirt front i'm actually surprised you've got one on it's because <laughs> I've got to talk to you about this investment with this other business partner who's you've known him, probably known him within the property circles, massive in finance. My network has always been, when I say small business owners, I don't mean midgets. <laughs> <laughs> Our network is a lot of people, self-employed, one man, two man, three, four man, sub a million, that sort of, rather than the big corporate. My, my business partner, John, is just phenomenal in finance. I think I might have said earlier. I've, I've just done two calls, so I'm confusing what I've said. But he he, he will have spoken at the Houses of Parliament on alternate finance, built a business worth 100 million. Um, where was I going with this? Has developed a business. When you go scrolling, can you still hear me? Do you know yes. you're scrolling? Okay, cool. No, no, we're anyway, all right. Listen, no, no, it's all good. He, he has teamed up with a guy. They've spent 12 months... Oh, they do due diligence in a way I'm not capable of, and don't have the don't have the behavioural style to even want to. Um, it's it's foreign exchange trading. They've gone through tw twelve months plus of getting the best traders with the best bots and working it all. It is making profit every month, and it is making for you with your money. We're, we're setting expectations of five percent per month. Well, you know, if you compounded that every month on month, you'd double your money within 14 and a half months. So this is exciting for me because I can put my money there. And also I'm looking for introducers, people who are talking to 
people every day. And we're predominantly going to business owners saying, you've got cash in your business. I, I, Mary shoves the VAT liability and corporate tax liability into a separate account every month. Well, corporate tax ain't due for over a year. It's sat there doing nothing. I'm going bang. Why don't I put it in here? Make 5%. By the way, I can access the money. No charges within a day. So it's not tied into anything. Why don't I make money on my money? So we're going to business owners and property investors going, actually, what are you doing with the money you're making from property? Or actually, if you've got some money here and grew that, it could help you with your property. Um, where was I going with that? Because what did you ask me? Because <laughs> it made me think about John. <laughs> it, it, it's just about thinking of other people. Actually, it all started when I said, I'm surprised you got a shirt on. That was it. That was it. Thank you. Because I've just had a call with John and an awesome guy who's coming in as an introducer and he's putting some money into this. And John has a laugh because if he if he dials me on WhatsApp and I click the wrong button, the video comes up, I'm sat topless. And then he'll catch me putting a T-shirt on. He says, you don't have to. We're friends. I said, yeah, but I do when I'm on camera. And that's why I put this on. Um, and then I was straight from his call into yours. And it, I thought, shall I go downstairs and get a black one? Because you know me, I wear black. And I thought, nah, hang it. Uh, it doesn't matter what other people think. But I also wanted to mention that great opportunity for anyone that is interested with that, because there's so much stuff out there. And I've said we're in a great technical, technological age. You're in the property industry, hugely networked. You know there's a lot of dodgy stuff out there. Um, mm. What I love about John, I want to be putting money into places where I can hear it from the horse's mouth. I invested in something global that is still paying me, but it's changed compared to the original rules. And again, it was from John. So we were one step away from the global guys, but that's one step too many. I've got some money in a stock market club that's not working. I have got first horse's mouth to the trader, but he's hard work. I didn't set him up as the trader. They came to me and said, do you want to put some money in this club? Whereas we've got accept it's our decisions you know we we that was that was the word that came out i want more control i can't yeah. control what pension companies are doing i can't control what big stuff over there is doing and you know that there's people in property that have put money in things that have fallen over because you didn't have any control of your money it was to the people you gave it to you've got to trust them you have control of your money and your account with this and i don't know i'm not getting five percent per month in many other places, I'm getting it in one other place. So it's an awesome opportunity. I've just, my, my eldest nephew is 27 or 8. He's on minimum wage as a school teacher and as assistant school teacher. He saved up some money. I can help him make some money. Yeah. You know, for him, for, I've got a guy in the village who's got a bad back. He, he's employed sweeping the streets, but he's a great plumber in the afternoons, but he's knackered and he said, I want to stop plumbing. I want to keep the job because I can come home and rest, but I want to keep the job because the pension's great. And we just worked out, compounded. How much do you need? He needed a couple of grand a month. So if this is paying 5% a month, how big a pot do we need to pay you that? Right. How much can you start with? And we worked out if he put, we needed a pot of 40 grand. If he started with four grand, which he said he got, in three and a half years, that would have compounded up eight, 16, 32, four, just over three and a half years and he was like that's no time at all for people is it for most people you know yeah i want to make some big money right now and i go damn by the way we took that was what i was saying we sold the house to get into rented house to got this we then flew backwards and forwards every month we got locked down in covid we should have only been in spain three months legally five months in we went you either get away with stuff in spain forever or they shoot you they have guns um and, and five months in we went what are we doing we love this mm. we're fortunate we can work from anywhere with a laptop i lost a couple of clients i gained a few more the only thing was my bar was shut the bar was shut in the square behind didn't stop me going down the mountain to the supermarket and getting beer to drink on my terrace so we went why don't we take residency before brexit it was just cheaper and easier it's still easy to do and that's that's what we did so nice Nice, like it. So that's, like why it. I've got, that's why I've got the yellow T-shirt on. That's why you've got. I mean, that's a hell of an answer to that. But also, you know, if anybody is interested in this, then like uh, Andy says, do do check him out on LinkedIn. If you're listening to this on the podcast and you can't see what he's talking about, we, it will be a picture on the podcast episode anyway. But he has a very long beard. Looks like a member of ZZ Top. One of you know, um, uh, the, one, it, the one who's the one who's still alive, not the one who's still away. alive. And the uh, one who's still alive, I saw him in Birmingham, UK, a few months ago, and it's probably the last time he'll, he'll ever be in the country, I guess. 
So, so there you go. I'll take that. Father Christmas, I won't take. No, no, no. Well, that's what I thought. It's just an easy. Everybody, you know, will have have their own thought on that. So that's for, that's good. For, for the children listening, Father Christmas doesn't exist. <laughs> whoa, whoa! You can't say that. You've got to be a believer, man. You've got to be a believer. Um, so let's, let's fire through this quick fire round a little bit quicker. <laughs> As I know okay. you've, you've got other calls. Um, if you could sit down around a table and have dinner with three people, a dead or alive, who would you sit down and have dinner with? Let me let me let me show you this first of all. Oh, here we can go. you, can you, oh, can, you see, can you see him in the corner, sat down there by the wall? See him. The little fella stood by the wall. No. Where is he? He's probably there. Anyway, I, I have a. It, it, it is a resin, eighteen-inch high model of Yoda. Oh, great! Right. I could. So he's, all right. I'll have to check the replay. He, I don't know whether I showed it you properly. Um, he sits there. He's on my virtual board, you know. So I go, "What would Yoda say? Mm, do or do not? There is no try." Um, Brad Sugars always, you know, he's on my virtual board. Um, what was the answer? Who would I sit down with for what? For dinner, basically to have dinner with yeah. three people that are alive. Well, I did, I did it with Brad Sugars. I bought him dinner. And it was interesting. A load of people muscled in on it years ago, and uh, he chose the wine, which I thought was going to be really expensive. So now, who? Um, I'd, I'd be interested in seeing what people like Elon Musk and Bezos are really like because I, I I don't watch a lot of people, you know, and but they and what about Bill Gates? They clearly are phenomenal thinkers in what they've done. Um, Zuckerberg, you said three people. Well, okay, number one has to be Tony Robbins. I have been on stage with him. I, I crewed for him. I shook his hand, and I have never looked into someone's eyes that seemed to go so deep. And the guy is just incredible. So I'd have to sit down with him. Um, who else? If there's only three um, for dinner, I, I guess. I guess Musk or Bezos. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate. I'm interested in AI. We use it a little bit, and we, we, we just about to blow our lives and business and our clients apart with studying with Kane Minkus and, and stuff. So Bezos and um, that's all very business wise. No, but Robert Robbins is number one. Mate, what, I'd, I'd want to sit down for, for dinner three times with Robbins instead of three people for one dinner. <laughs> All right, fair enough, fair enough. We'll give you that, we'll give you that. Um, have you got three books you'd recommend? Yeah, man, for what, for success? Um, yeah. I think if you're looking at, I, I think number one has got to be Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Rob Kiyosaki. It, it just defines, it just flips the mind of so many people, especially if you're in the sort of employee mentality before you're getting into the, self-employed investor um if you're in business and you're looking to build a business and that could be property and that could be property with only one or two properties um i would definitely read the e-myth revisited by michael e gerber he's done a bunch of them around e-myths like e-myth contractor you want the e-myth revisited i've given that to business owners and they've gone if you can teach me this stuff i'm your client and and i've signed them up for you know 30 grand a year coaching programs and stuff that's the second one. I think the third one, if you're interested in property, and I mean this genuinely, because and he is sort of those two guys are global authors. Is Simon Zucci's Property Magic? I, I, anyone who asks me about property, I say read that because if you're new to property or thinking of it, that again just gives people so many insights. So those are the three main books. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Well, that is it, my friend. An absolute pleasure to have you on and speak to you as always. If again uh, anybody wants to reach out to you, is, is LinkedIn the place to be? Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, my phone number's actually, I think, might be in there. And WhatsApp LinkedIn's the starting point um, because you want to connect with me anyway. Um, those of you that don't, and a lot of property investors don't understand LinkedIn effectively. And a lot of people have come out of corporate, so they they haven't used it in a sales role. I have twenty two or twenty four thousand connections. If you connect with me you immediately have those as second tier connections that you can find in searches. And I have a big percentage of those, as you would imagine, that are connected in, in involved in the property environment. Now I get property investors going, I don't want investors. I want business owners for cash. I have 24,000 connections. You'd be, you'd be daft not to connect with me. Now, when you connect, I have some automation. I've said it earlier that will accept and then send you some messages and you'll go, what the hell is he on about? The moment you message me, I will respond personally. Um, and those of you that are going, I've just started working with two great property investors. 
uh, husband and wife, and they've gone, we know we need to use this. We want to get to more people with cash because we want private finance. Um, can you help us? Yes, we're building the message campaign. We're going to connect with people every day. We're going to message them fundamentally saying, are you interested in getting better return on your money? Can we talk? Um, and so LinkedIn is magic. So, yeah, that's the, that's the best starting point. Marvellous, marvellous. And any final thoughts from you, my man, before we wrap this one up? I, I didn't know beforehand that my T-shirt was going to be complimentary to the colour of your cushion in the background. Um, I love your humour, man. Keep pushing this stuff out. People listening, all I, what I would say is property is, is a great opportunity. Yes, I've said you've got to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. You've got to learn how to do it properly. Um, business and, and entrepreneurialism and investing, I think we're at the best time in, in, in mankind right now with 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 the internet and where we're at to and the opportunities that are possible and i would say yeah with, with if you think you can go don't listen to the naysayers mm. you know there's a lot of people that just believe stuff's too good to be true or it's impossible eh, well you've had some great examples from 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 this from this call go go decide what you want to do and and go hook up with people that can help you get there because it's awesome and connect with me and if it's you know any any network or contacts or of marks i'm, I'm happy to help because i love what you're doing mark because people need to hear this stuff brilliant brilliant well uh, once again thank you for joining me i appreciate your time today so as we wrap this one up, make sure that you have your vision. Make sure you know exactly what it is that you want to be doing. You can break that vision, break those goals down into bite-sized chunks and take action on those every day. Step by step, you can make it. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have and you think somebody else should hear it, then please feel free to follow, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and, of course, reach out to Andy, reach out to myself. We are more than happy to help you on your journey. You do not have to do this alone. You all take care. And bye for now.